Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center and for the Center for Security Policy, with important information about the alliance between the increasingly violent Black Lives Matter movement and Islamic supremacist groups in the United States. Nihad Awad, the executive director of the Hamas-linked Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, said it plainly at the 14th annual Mas Ikna, that is Muslim American Society and Islamic Circle of North America, convention in December 2015. This is what Awad said, Black Lives Matter is our matter. Black Lives Matter is our campaign. Khalil Sabra, another Muslim activist, told the Muslim conference, basically, you are the new black people of America. We are the community that staged a revolution across the world. We are the community that staged a revolution across the world. If we could do that, why can't we have that revolution in America? With the recent murder of five policemen in Dallas by a sniper during a Black Lives Matter protest, that revolution may be upon us. The revolution of hatred and violence that Islamic supremacists and race hustlers both have worked so long to bring about. Awad and Sabra were by no means the first to identify their own efforts with those of the people who want to bring about a race war in the United States. The far-left Countercurrent News reported this in January 2015. Recently, a number of representatives from the Dream Defenders, Black Lives Matter, and various Ferguson anti-police brutality protesters made history through a solidarity trip to Palestine. This little group toured the West Bank in order to see for themselves the purported link between oppression emanating from the Israeli state as well as that which victims of police brutality are experiencing in America. Ahmed Abu Znaid of Dream Defenders explained, the goals were primarily to allow for the group members to experience and see firsthand the occupation, ethnic cleansing, and brutality Israel has levied against Palestinians, but also to build real relationships with those on the ground leading the fight for liberation. Now what was the purpose of building such relationships? Abu Znaid continued, he said, in the spirit of Malcolm X, Angela Davis, Stokely Carmichael, and many others, we thought the connection between the African-American leadership of the movement in the U.S. and those on the ground in Palestine needed to be re-established and fortified. As a Palestinian who has learned a great deal about struggle, movement, militancy, and liberation from African-Americans in the U.S., I dreamt of the day where I could bring about power, bring that power back to my people in Palestine. This trip is a part of that process. Another activist on the trip, Sherelle Brown, delved deep into leftist conspiratorial fantasy as she claimed, so many parallels exist between how the U.S. polices, incarcerates, and perpetuates violence on the black community, and how the Zionist state that exists in Israel perpetuates the same on Palestinians. This is not to say that there aren't vast differences and nuances that need to always be named, but our oppressors are literally collaborating together, learning from one another. And as oppressed people, we have to do the same. So, expect the same tactics to be employed in both wars by those who wish to kill and destroy. The New York University chapter of the Radical Students for Justice in Palestine, the SJP, repeated Brown's equation of police forces in the U.S. with the Zionist state, saying this just after the Dallas shootings. In the past 48 hours, another two black men have been lynched by the police. The total number of black people lynched by cops in 2016 now totals 136. We must remember that many U.S. police departments train with the Israeli Defense Forces. The same forces behind the genocide of black people in America are behind the genocide of Palestinians. What this means is that Palestinians must stand with our black comrades. We must struggle for their liberation. It is as important as our own. Alton Sterling is as important as Ali Dawabshe. Palestinian liberation and black liberation go together. We must recognize this and commit to building for it. After getting criticized for this, the SJP issued a clarification. Here it is. Our statement regarding the murders of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile and the rampant murders of black Americans by the police was not a suggestion that their deaths are part of an Israeli conspiracy. Israel did not literally kill either of these men, 
That much is obvious. What is also clear is that American police departments and the IDF train together. The IDF assists the NYPD and other American police departments in their oppression and murder of black people. These groups share a common logic that manifests in several types of oppression, white supremacist racism among them. If we in the SJP and in the Palestinian Solidarity Movement more generally are serious about ending Israeli oppression, then we must stand with black Americans. We need to be in the streets with them, and we need to organize against police brutality. Counterterrorism investigator Kyle Scheidler noted in Town Hall last March that this merging revolutionary alliance goes back as far as the first outbreak of disorder in Ferguson. Few may recall the attendance at Michael Brown's funeral of CARE Executive Director Nihad Awad. In November of 2014, Fox News reported on an effort by CARE Michigan Director Dawood Walid to link the death of Michael Brown at the hands of police and the death of Lukman Abdullah, a Detroit imam shot during an FBI raid. Abdullah was described by the FBI as the leader of a nationwide Islamic organization known as the Ummah, run by convicted cop killer Jamil Abdullah Amin. Abdullah's group engaged in criminal activity in order to raise funds in order to, for an effort to establish Sharia law in opposition to the U.S. government. CARE and the SJP have clearly hitched their star to the Black Lives Movement and are retailing its distortions. In Dallas, they saw what they're backing. Both leftists and Islamic supremacists want to destroy the existing order and replace it with a system that they contend will be more just and free of racism. Both leftists and Muslims have resorted to violence in service of this goal, and both will do so again. Hamas-linked care itself does not openly advocate violence, but it shares the goal of every violent jihad group in the world, to impose Islamic law, Sharia, wherever it can be imposed, and ultimately over the whole world. As Hamas-linked care's Ibrahim Hooper said back in 1993, I wouldn't want to create the impression that I wouldn't like the government of the United States to be Islamic sometime in the future. Whether Black Lives Matter and its allies will accept Sharia is an open question, but in the meantime, subversion of the existing order by both violent and peaceful means proceeds apace. The defamation of police with wild and false accusations also proceeds apace. The murders in Dallas, regardless of the cosmetic condemnations from Black Lives Matter, which fly in the face of its incendiary rhetoric, reveal how all these allied groups will manifest their hatred and accomplish their goal of destruction. Did Nihad Awad have five dead police officers on his mind when he told the Mas Ikna conference that Black Lives Matter is our campaign? Would Nihad Awad, who has publicly expressed support for the murderous jihad terror group Hamas, have stopped short of saying this if he had known? Only Awad can answer that. But in the meantime, the alliance will continue to wreak havoc. I'm Robert Spencer.